Delivery is everything. I'm not talking like Pizza Hut and Chinese, though uh, to a fat guy like me that is pretty damn crucial to survival, but I'm talking about when putting your opinion out there. You need to have composure, you need to be casual about it, you need to get your thoughts together and deliver them in a way that people are going to be receptive to them. Because the moment you start getting negative or bitching or going into all caps mode, that basically is a write-off. People are just like, mm. doesn't matter how accurate you are or how truthful that your statement may be, if it's just handled the wrong way, people will have nothing to do with it. They just deflect it off and like, I don't care about this guy's opinion. So it's really important that you make sure you get your opinion across in the right way. You don't see me bound down every night on my knees. Like, God, why the fuck do I got a short penis? What did you do to me, man? Can I get a buff? No. I do what every other man does, and I slap a control freak right on the tip, and I go to work, right? That's exactly what you need to do. You need to find solutions, you need to get your thoughts together, and you need to organize them, and you need to do it the right way. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the top five things that I think Crucible can benefit from if they are tweaked. A way to make the game healthier and a happier experience for us. Number one, and in no particular order, we are gonna be talking about pulse grenades. These things are just little demons, guys. They are designed to kill your soul. These get thrown in as soon as they hit any surface, be it ceilings, walls, foreheads, these things detonate and send out a crazy shockwave, a pulse, a massive amount of tick damage, one after another after another. And the problem is not necessarily the strength of each one of these ticks, but the duration. Like there is very little room for you to react when these things hit the ground. You basically have to scurry away and panic or just be devoured by these because they have crazy amounts of damage in a very short period of time. And because of this, they are extremely overwhelming in the current meta. My solution, just slow down the tick damage. Numero dos. Probably the most important change that you can make to Crucible right now is just a more reliable spawn system. These spawns are all over the place. They're extremely unpredictable, which is not a healthy thing for a game. People used to know when playing Call of Duty, if you had A and B, that meant they were spawning at C. And if you pushed too far into C, they would probably flip to something like A. There's always a pattern, something to expect, but there is absolutely no way to predict what is going to happen from spawn to spawn. They said they worked on these. I can't tell a difference. If anything, they may have gotten worse. There are so many times, and it happens every game that I'm in, that I actually spawn on a guy, or somebody else spawns on me, and it gets really nasty really quick. More importantly, a lot of people feel like this game is too much on the team shot, and I feel like part of this issue actually originates with the lack of good spawn system. I feel like everybody feels pressured. The moment they kill a guy, they think they have an advantage. Naturally, you kill one guy, you're like, okay, so it's a 4v3. Let's push this advantage, let's put the pressure on them, we can take the remaining three out. By the time you move on those guys, maybe you get another one, maybe you don't. The other guy is just spawned behind him, or two guys spawn behind him. So as soon as you push and you take that advantage, all of a sudden they've been reinforced, you're out of position, you're vulnerable, and that's your ass. And I feel like that's what's so confusing right now, is you don't know if they're gonna spawn right behind them, you don't know if it's gonna flip, you don't know what it takes to actually push them to another area of the map. Things are very, very awkward with the spawn system and this is probably the most important area that they need to improve on make spawns great again please bungie listen to us third on the list and without a doubt a lot of people are talking about this in social media other creators other influencers high caliber rounds the problem with high caliber rounds is that when you are shot by this it creates a ridiculous amount of flinch unpredictable flinch and when you're aiming becomes unpredictable it's no longer about accuracy it now just basically becomes a toss-up and this is where you create that confusion and just a lack of a dynamic experience and when things become random it's no longer balanced or accurate and that's not something you want it's not healthy for your game and this is why a lot of people want this removed as much as i'd like to say hey we could probably nerf this or balance this out realistically for this to not be that big of a deal or not be as crippling as it is they would have to severely nerf this thing. And at that point, you might as well substitute another perk in so that you actually have a legitimate bonus to your gun. So the best solution for this is to remove it from the game entirely. It's not as good as it used to be, in my opinion, in Destiny 1 for PvE, so it's not like it really affects that side of the game. Honestly, this is only a problem for Crucible, and I feel like this definitely just needs pull. Fourth on my list is gun balance. Now what I'm going to tell you may warrant a laugh or two, but I think we are actually really close to pure gun balance in Destiny 2. 
And I know that's pretty hard to envision given the track record, but hear me out. I feel like there are only two archetypes of weapon in this game that need some legitimate consideration for balance. And I will use the N-word. <laughs> Nerf. This needs to happen. One of them doesn't need a major one, the other one does. And I'm sure you can predict what guns I'm talking about right now. We're talking about the Last Hope family, the sidearm archetype, and we're talking about the Uriel's family, the auto rifle, the 450 RPM auto rifle. Just the existence of these archetypes threaten the rest of the options in the game. Who would voluntarily use something else? And you know it. To be true, people don't. They stick to the Uriels, they stick to these metas, not because they're popular weapons, but because if they choose anything else, they're going to be at a natural disadvantage. And who wants that? You can't even blame them. Now, how do you balance the last hope? Truth of the matter is they got to go after the strength, the raw impact or rate of fire of these weapons, because they are so much stronger than the rest. They're roughly 30% faster in terms of time to kill than the rest of the competition in the game. And this is crucial. That is way too much of an advantage. A third faster? Is crazy so these completely decimate competition they make it so that any other sidearm is not viable any other submachine gun can't even hold a light to this gun this one definitely needs hit with the nerf hammer and this isn't one of those guns that i think you can tweak with more recoil or something like that just the raw burst and power of this weapon needs to be hit head on as for the uriel's family they're not so ridiculous in terms of power it's just they're so viable in so many different ranges and that's not healthy for an auto rifle the fact that these things do a decent job against Midas and Scouts, that is a laughable fact. And you know this because you've seen it time and time again. These things are so good in so many different ranges. They do well against submachine guns. They make other auto rifles just kind of pale in comparison because they don't have that kind of reach that these do. These are good out to distance. And because of these guns, just their existence makes it so that hand cannons and pulse rifles have no area of strength. There's no need to use those, so I call for a slight nerf to these types of auto rifles. And what this does is it opens up opportunities for the rest of the guns to do well. You bring your last hope down, now you can use your Soros Iron Banner sidearm. You can use more submachine guns like the Foggy Notions. You can now, if these auto rifles are brought down, use your Martyr's Make with confidence. You can use Pulse Rifles again. You can use other things like Hand Cannons. We now have variety and options, which is what I consider to be healthy. We have a game with RPG elements and 100 weapons at our disposal, but we're pretty much forced to only use like 10, which is not very fun. The fifth and final one on our list is invisibility. And I know you hunters are pretty throttled out there in terms of abilities. I know this. I'm sorry, my hunter friends. I can't help that your dodge roll is just poo-poo. And I don't mean to attack the one good thing the Night Stalker's got going for it. But it's cheesy, guys, and it needs to be said. Invisibility may not seem like a big deal to you right now, but it will eventually become an epidemic. More and more people will find out about it, just like Shade Step was initially. And then as it progressed, as time went on, people had it used against them. They're like, oh shit, well I'm gonna do this. The big issues with this are the fact that when you shoot an invisible target, not only is it hard enough to find the target, Lord knows you're probably not landing a precision shot, but when you find that invisible target and you shoot them They are not revealed instantly, which needs to happen This is a common thing in games where invisibility is used when you are located when you are identified It reveals you that is what's supposed to happen why it doesn't happen in this game I have no damn clue. It's kind of confusing to go further on while invisible Some of those tracker grenades do not work I've seen axiom bolts just stop in their track and say fuck it, bro. I'm taking a nap and that's how it is. They have no interest in invisible things. More so, this really, in a dramatic fashion, impacts PvP experience for console players. Because when a person's invisible, aim assist has no influence. And it may not seem like a big deal, but any of you guys that have played this game and have tried to shoot an invisible target, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. It's very hard to land a bullet or two, let alone enough to kill an entire person while invisible. Generally, they're going to be able to pop out of invisibility, reveal themselves, and tear into you before you know where they are, where their head is, and you just don't have time to react. It is very strong, and I've seen this thing abused so many times. Again, it's not the player's fault, but when people are shot, they need to be revealed. That way, aim assist can be activated again, and things are as they should be. Invisibility should still be a stealth perk. With this change, it's not going to be useless. You're just going to need to use it smart. You're not going to be able to use it as aggressively as it is now. It's not going to be so easy to get away. You could be shot right now and then roll out of it, be invisible, and then people aren't going to be able to land the rest of the shots because of no aim assist. Again, this isn't going to be a big deal for PC, but for console, it really does hurt the experience. So 
that's why I feel like it's one. And that may be my personal one that some people may disagree with. I encourage you guys to leave feedback down below. Drop a comment. Again, be polite. Make sure you get your message across without being extremely emotional or kind of irritated. Just use your words, think about it, release it all over my comment section's face. Go ahead, guys. Thanks again. Subscribe. Go ahead and fist the havoc that like button as it helps the channel grow. And I will catch you with another video soon.